Optimising fancy football with jump, a talk by me, Dean Markwick. What is fancy Premier League? It's a fantasy game for the English Premier League where you're building a football team using the different players across the Premier League. You end up scoring points based on how well these players perform and you're competing with your friends and hopefully score well to move up the leaderboards. The general barometer is if you finish in the top 100k you are good and there are 7 million teams that competed in the previous season. But the game is getting more analytical. There's more and more people that are using data to help craft their teams and build their strategies and it's sort of becoming a bit like an amateur version of Moneyball. So now there are two schools of thoughts, one where a lot of people are using data and another where people are relying more on their intuition. So I'm one of those data people and I'm going to show you how we can write the general FPL problem in Julia with Jump. We're going to try and arrive at the most optimal team week on week and I should know that I'm a Jump tourist so this is going to be about using Jump to solve your problem rather than understanding the nuts and bolts of the underlying optimization. I just want to write some Jump code to get the best team out. So what is an FPL season? Before the game starts you need to choose 15 players and that involves selecting two goalkeepers, five defenders, five midfielders and three forwards. You can have no more than three players from any one team, so no more than three Liverpool players for example, and you need to spend less than £100 million. Here is an example of a squad where their prices are below and this is essentially what you're trying to create to get the best points each week. So each week you need to choose the 11 players that you think will score the most points out of your 15. This means choosing a formation that could be one goalkeeper, between three and five defenders, between three and five midfielders, and between one and three forwards. You're also choosing a captain, and this means they get double points for that week, and the remaining four players, they go on your bench, such that if one of your 11 players in your team doesn't score, then they are replaced by someone on your bench. And then finally, your total score is that some of the individual points from all of your players from that given week. So they'll get points based on if they score goals, how many minutes they play, if they have an assist, and all things like that. And this is an example of a game week where their points are now the numbers below their names. For the rest of the game weeks, you then need to change one of your 15 players with a new player from the universe, and then each additional change after that first one costs 4 points from your total score. But again, you just need to then select 11 players for the next game week, and choose your formation and repeat this until the end of the season after 38 game weeks. So what goes into the human decision making process? Well firstly you need to think about what formation you want to use. Does this mean that you're going to be using more midfielders or say more forwards? And you also want to be thinking about who's got the easier games that week. So if Liverpool play Norwich, you think Liverpool are going to be scoring lots of goals, you should probably have some Liverpool players in your team. And then likewise, you can start thinking about who is in form that week. Is there certain players that are on a hot streak and seem to be scoring lots of points? But this can all be summarised with an expected points model that you could build yourself or download from the internet. So we're going to use these expected points and input them into Jump to try and maximise the total number of points, which is our objective. We're going to define our variables, which in our case is selecting the players out of an available pool of players. And we're going to constrain these variables based on the positions, the teams and the budget. So in, for the first example we're going to just choose the best team each week and here we're going to assume that you've already got your squad so you have 15 players and you have an array of 15 expected points for each of the players. You just want to know what formation they're going to play in, who goes on the bench and who to captain. How do we actually solve this in jump? Well I've taken a knapsack example and extended it based off these FPL conditions. Going through the code from top to bottom, we firstly create two different variables using the variable macro that are binary, so represent a 1 if that player is selected or 0 if they're not. There's one for the team and there's one for the captain. We then define our objective, which is to maximise the total number of points, which is achieved by multiplying the points by the team and then doubling the total number of points for the captain. We then introduce our constraints. We only want 11 players in our team, so the sum of that team variable needs to be equal to 11. And likewise for the captain, that sum needs to be equal to 1. We need to make sure the captain is part of the playing team, so this is a non-linear constraint. And then finally we have the team position constraints to make sure that we're going to set a sensible formation based on those uh, minimum and maximum values. We then optimise the model to run the magic and find what team it outputs. 
So for a given random game week, this is the optimal formation given the expected points and the numbers below their names. And we can see that Jump has managed to select the highest expected points for each position and put in those that are scoring less on the bench. So it seems to be doing the correct thing. And then we've captained Mohamed Salah, who's got the highest number of expected points, which again is a sensible decision. That's the best player to double their points. So overall, did we need to use Jump for this? Not really, but it does confirm that our Jump code so far is doing the right thing and producing a sensible result. So if we up the difficulty to now choosing the optimal squad, we're now choosing the 15 person squad from the entire universe of players. So this means then choosing an 11 person team and a four player bench from this after we've chosen these 15 players. And we have to now include the budget constraint and also that there's no more than three players from a given team. And again, moving down from top to bottom, we've got the same objective as previously, but we need to weight the bench players by 10% of their points to make sure that we don't just put um, really cheap players on our bench just in case they do have to replace one of our 11 players and we also include this budget constraint now by multiplying the cost by the squad and making sure that is less than or equal to the overall budget we then want to enforce the team constraint so making sure that each of the teams has no more than three players in our squads and then we've both got now the squad and the team positions to make sure that we choose at least two goalkeepers five defenders five midfielders and three forwards but our actual team can vary based on the expected points on a given day. And then we just optimise this model. This is the results for that optimal squad from the entire universe. And those that do play FPL can hopefully see that it looks like a sensible squad, given some of the big names here. And once again, we've kept in Salah based on the fact that he's got the highest expected points for the given game week. So overall, it looks like Jump is doing what we expect it to do and is producing sensible results. So hopefully this convinces you that jump is great and that you can quite easily write your problems in this jump code to start optimizing for them. And my general advice is to start simple and slowly increase the complexity to get what you want. So for example, in my next steps, I'm gonna be including multiple rounds. So let jump start recommending transfers based on those optimal uh, moves. Thank you for listening to my talk. If you want to uh, hear from more from me, I've got my website where I blog monthly and I'm also on Twitter at these two links. Thank you.